see Saku on a hot summer day. Coffee comes back in a nerve wracking way. The dishes and laundry take the garbage out. What a day! What a day! What a day! Welcome to Capital Region today. What a great show we have lined up for. We're kind of going up to Saratoga today and finding out a little bit about what's going on up there, which it's not just the races, there's other things going on up there. And then we're going to be talking about, well, check your attic, check your basement, because there's an appraiser's roadshow coming up and you might just find something that you can uh, make a little money on, who knows. But uh, I'm Ann Pearl, your host today, and we're going to be talking with uh, our guests from uh, the United uh, the, uh, Universal Preservation Hall up in Saratoga, as well as the Children's Museum of Saratoga. They're moving. We're going to find out all about that move. And then we're going to be talking with Joe Fava from the Schenectady Civic Players. And we're going to be talking about the Appraisers Roadshow, what you can bring and what's going on. So uh, stay tuned for all of this show. we got a great one coming up, but we're going to start right out with Dinosaurs in Motion. And that's up in the Universal Preservation Hall. Teddy Foster is with us. She's the director, and uh, we're always pleased to have her on the show to talk about what's going up on up in Saratoga. And uh, this is no exception. Dinosaurs are there. Yeah, we have dinosaurs. And they're not just the dinosaurs that, because when I was there, and we're going to see some of the B-roll in a little bit, it's, they're different. They're not just like, uh, you know, uh, plastic or, or, you know, paper mache or whatever it is. These are the internal workings, so you can see. Right, and they're actually all sculptures. So the title of the exhibit is Dinosaurs in Motion, Where Art and Science Meet. And when you see these dinosaurs, you'll totally get it. Each is individually sculpt sculpted out of recycled metal. Isn't and that an amazing thing? They're amazing. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Maybe it'd be a good time to see the B-roll to to say to get the in the mood for it, and then we'll talk about it. how's That's that. That's a great idea. Yeah, can we see the B-roll on that, please? Well, here we are, Capital Region today, and we are on location, and we are so happy to be here. They are loading in this great dinosaur exhibit. I'm Ann Perillo, and you've seen me on Capital Region today. But today we're in Saratoga, here at the. Universal Preservation Hall, amazing building, an amazing exhibit going up. But right now I have Joey Lambert with us. Hey, Joey, hi. Hey, how are you? And you are, where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. You're all the way up here to the north and you're getting an exhibit together. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> how many exhibits like this have you put up? Um, I've never, this is, I've been doing exhibits for 15 years and this one I can actually say is one of a kind. I've never put anything else up like this. I've done a lot of As different. As big, you mean? Um, just the style of dinosaurs. There's a lot of animatronic dinosaurs and that kind of things around, but with the steel structures and being able to play with them, I've never done anything like it. And you it. were sitting there playing with them the whole time, right? I, I usually do. I usually walk around and just kind of wiggle them around. It's nice to test them and make so, sure everything's working. So the idea that we have uh, animatronics, what, to explain to the audience, what is that? Well, animatronics would be more like on motors and that kind of thing. Uh, you they just you know, are ele electric Airs animatronics. And, and, and yes. All that good stuff. Well, with this exhibit, you know, you go through first of the first couple of dinosaurs are kind of static, and it shows the progress that the artist that built these sculptures started with, as far as like he had static ones that didn't really move as much, and the movements kind of progress as you go through the different galleries. Oh, so there's a number. This isn't the only one, obviously. No. How many are in there? I want to say 13, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> well, that might be a lucky number. Who that's, knows? That's right. <laughs> so 13 of them, and they range in different sizes. But I saw one that was absolutely amazing. And, well, they all are. But the pterodactyl, I mean, with feathers and everything? What, or was it a pterodactyl? No, that's the American crow and a whooping crane that we have downstairs. And that was his last studio. That was when he got the most movements out of the sculptures he oh, was building. Oh, so those are not part of the dinosaur, but they are part of the exhibit, but they, they are. aren't dinosaurs. Yes, they were his final. Wow, I thought I was really off base when I looked at those with feathers. I said, well, I think the dinosaurs did have feathers, <laughs> right? Well, I think there's a theory that's, yeah. that they are distant cousins of the birds, actually. Right. I'm not 100%, I'm not an expert as far as the paleontology of them. <laughs> you never know, you might be by the end of this. <laughs> that's right. But uh, tell me, so what is your role in this? Are you just an overseer or are you, well, that comes from another film, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, are you just looking uh, over the crew or are you a hands-on person? And how long did it take you to learn how to do this? 
Um, I've been doing building this show for about five years and I probably still don't know every piece of the show because okay. there's so many different moving parts and pieces. I have a gentleman that helps me with the show. He's another lead. I'm the production manager for the show. Okay. So I make sure everything gets in the building and everything's up and running and decide how many crew guys it's going to take to get it in and that kind of thing. <laughs> well, that it's a big job to do that. It is. And this uh, exhibit from what we know is going to be here till I believe October the 17th. Is that the right date? 17, around, around that date. I believe so. So they have plenty of opportunity to see this. Absolutely. Um, and there's two floors of this, mm -hmm. right? We're only in, in the great gallery That's because right. this T-Rex needs plenty of space. He needs room. <laughs> yeah. and, and, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you, and, and Zeb, I know you're filming. Go over there and make it work. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I hate to tell you, but I think that T-Rex has a serious overbite. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. How long do you think it would take to build it? Or do you have any concept? To build it from scratch or just to install what's no, already been made? No, I'm not talking about installation, but somebody had to put this together so you could install. Correct. I do not know how long it took him to build this. I, didn't, I, I actually was reading and trying to find any type of documentation on how long it took. And it's actually not in anything I could find. Really? Yes. Yeah, okay. So the artist that built these sculptures. Do you have his name? Uh, John Payne. Okay, and he's from John, Asheville, John North Payne, Carolina. He, 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 Absolutely. Shout out. <laughs> and uh, he just basically had stuff laying around his shop and built these, a lot of this stuff out of parts and pieces he had laying around and just welded it together. And he had a kind of an obsession with dinosaurs and and just wanted to make them come to life. Can you even imagine what his garage looked like? That he could build something like this out of the scrap? <laughs> I imagine he was already doing a lot Maybe. of work at that yeah. point. Thanks Fantastic. so much, Joey. It's so pl such a pleasure to meet you. Uh, you as well. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, the takeaway from that is that I'm Italian. I use my hands. I'm looking at that. And I go, I talk with my hands all the time. But he was so, like, he didn't use his hands, and I'm my hands are flying all over the place. <laughs> but anyway, Teddy, we, they, we had a lot of fun that day because we, we really uh, talked to the people that were setting it up. Tell us about the setup, and, and what was that like? Because it, I didn't think they did that in one afternoon. No, it took 10 days to set up the exhibit, actually. And all of the, uh, all of the, all of the sculptures are basically made out of steel and metal, so... There was a lot of load in. Uh, we used a lot of lifts, a lot of manpower. It took 10 guys to set up the, uh, the show. And 10? You had 10 people? Yeah. I know, because I didn't see 10 there at the time, because there were probably a half a dozen there when I was right. there. Right, but the 10 guys set up the show, and uh, Joe Lambert, who was just he was Yeah, he was a great guy. He was the chief art handler, so he's really the one who, who set the show and designed the show to be set up in our building. He was wonderful. The company's been wonderful. And the show has been very well received. Yeah. Um, could you get them all in there? We actually couldn't get them all in there. We could not get the triceratops in the building because his head was too big. And he actually, the head actually ended up living on the Proctor's main stage for a couple of days. <laughs> but um, then uh, we called Crossgates Mall and asked, we asked if we could put the triceratops down there. And that's where he is. Triceratops is right off the food court at Crossgates Mall advertising the exhibit. Well, what a great idea yeah. because, I mean, who would have thought about doing something like that to advertise it, you know? We've had a lot of people come in saying that they saw the Triceratops. And wanted to see at, the rest of them. Crossgates and they wanted to see the rest of them. So yeah. it's wonderful. Now, w when we were filming that, uh, we, we were in that room where he went over and he, the big, I don't want to say the big gallery. It isn't a gallery. It's, it's called a, a Great Hall. It's a Great Hall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. So tell me, what else do you use that for? I mean, you're not going to have that uh, that uh, T-Rex in there forever. Well, no. The Great Hall is our main performance space at UPH, and it has actually been designed to be a theater in the round that seats 700. Uh, but it was originally a church. It was originally a Methodist church, right? And the Methodists were very big, are very big in this part of the country. And that church was built, and it was designed to be not only a place of worship, but also a speak, speaker's hall for famous people of the day. Oh, to come and speak to. that's why it's designed that way, too. Right. Yeah. But also, they hosted a lot of Methodist conferences of ministers. 
uh, they'd have, they'd get a thousand people in that room. Yeah. Well, it's it's um, so you you're saying that even in a um, if you have a uh, in the center have your performance center, right? Then people sit all the way around it. Then right, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. The room is quite large. How's I the acoustics? The room is like twelve thousand square feet, but yet it's fantastically intimate. Nobody's really farther than fifty feet from the performance. Okay. The acoustics are superb. Um, it, when we had the uh, famous jazz trumpeter Chris Bode play after we opened up in 2020. Mm. Uh, I have his album, yeah. It's he's wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, the headline the next day was uh, Saratoga now has its own Carnegie Hall. The show was fabulous. I mean, all the shows were fabulous. That we had. Oh, okay, so first of all, let's go back to the dinosaurs, and then I want to go back to your performance area. So uh, for the dinosaurs, you the, how that will, will be up what till mid October is the that? The dinosaurs it? will be with us till October seventeenth, and beginning the week of September the sixth, we're going to our new fall hours. Because the kids are in school. Kids and stuff. are in yeah. school, so we will be open uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, ten to four. And you can reserve a time online at uh, universalpreservationhall.org. Or we do take walk-ins. Well, and you do have it on two floors, so it's not like it's throughout uh, the building. Yeah, yeah, throughout the building. We, uh, yeah, lot, we've had a lot of different rooms too. Yeah, plenty of room. Uh, great, air, great air exchange in our building because of the HVAC system. Yeah, it's so quite a safe place to be. Um, so we really want to encourage. There is a charge, of course, to see them because I mean I can't imagine spending ten days setting it up and and, and renting the exhibit, which I'm sure you're renting right. it for a couple of months is not cheap. So you have to charge. Right. So it's twenty five dollars per adult and fifteen dollars for kids under seventeen. We also require that you be masked, whether okay. you're inoculated or not. We require that you wear the mask. And that's the same here at Proctor, so that we do the same thing, except that at this table is the only time you can be unmasked right. if you've been vaccinated. Right. And we are six feet apart. So. Right. And when we reopen for music uh, in November, you will have to be vaccinated and masked to be in our building. And that's going to be the same at Proctor's. Exactly. I know that. Yeah. Have to show proof of vaccination. Yeah. And I think equity is requiring that as well. Exactly. And so many of the musicians, the big musicians unions require it also. Yeah, they just want to be safe. They want right. to continue doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You said November, so it's coming up in November. A lot of cool things coming up. You had a wedding too, didn't you, in the dinosaurs? We are, yeah, we had a, we, we're having a wedding October 10th in the dinosaurs. Isn't that it's the funniest be, thing to have? Fun. Yeah. Very, we're really excited about that. that what a cool idea. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's going to be really different and really wonderful. But it's a it's a wedding they will never forget. Exactly, the pictures having T Rex fabulous. hanging out with you. <laughs> uh, so the uh, the show actually will take about ten days to two weeks. The exhibit to uh, leave the building. Oh yeah, because you got to break it down now. Transform the building back into a music hall. So we will start music again. I know we have shows starting in November. We're going to have choir, choir, choir. What's that? Um, That's an interesting title. Yeah. Let me think. Would that be about choirs? You think it's? it's I think it's a choir. I think it might uh, be. <laughs> and I think that'll be wonderful. We also have Max Weinberg's uh, jukebox is coming. Um, we have a big day planned for November twentieth, which will. That's right. Before. Just before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving yeah. Uh, November twentieth is the actual date. It's the birth date of the building. Oh, so, really? Uh, and the building will be 150 years old. So we're planning. What a, a big celebration. Second opening night and huge birthday bash. Very excited for that. And we have a number of things scheduled for uh, December. One thing I know we will have is uh, we have It's a Jazzy Christmas. There'll be a wonderful jazz show all around jazz Christmas music that will happen as well as the next night it, or the next day it'll be a radio broadcast of a jazzy Christmas, and I believe the public will be invited in to, How cool. to live that experience. Be the audience, yeah. 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 Uh, we're booking many of the shows that postponed due to the pandemic are now rebooking, so yeah. uh, everybody will be hearing a whole lot more about what's coming. But you can buy tickets for the November show and Jazzy Christmas online now. You can buy them online. And right. do you buy them through Proctors? Or yep, do you, yeah, through Proctors. We, because you're part of the Proctors Collaborative. We are. Yeah, so you can go to our website, Proctor's, the rep website. You can buy our tickets on all of them. Right. Uh, so you, the other thing that, that you're located, at, if I recall correctly, 25 Washington Street, is that correct? Correct. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? Yeah. But anyway. No, really, I'm impressed. And if you come up Broadway, you just take a left at Starbucks, and we're a half a block. And you're right there. Where do people park? 
Because that's always an issue. Right. Well, where do I park when I go there? Because, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, there is lots of on-street parking, but we do tell people to park in the Woodlawn Parking Garage, which is at the corner of Division Street and Woodlawn, because UPH is only a half a block away from there, and there's this signage that points to UPH. You can actually see the building. Mm -hmm. And it's just a half a block walk. We have a beautiful back gate. You walk right in, and you're right at the entrance. Oh, so that works right. out really well. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's behind. See, I didn't park there. When I was up there, I parked on the street. I didn't have any right. trouble at but all. At night for a show, sometimes it's a lot better, uh, you know, to have you park in the garage. We'll have ambassadors there that will help people find okay. their way. Mm -hmm. So once you've done it the first time, you won't have any trouble the second time. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have um, 150 years. And this was built as a Methodist, right? But then it didn't always stay as a Methodist, no, did it? in 1976, it became a Baptist church. Okay. And um, it was a Baptist church from 1976 until about the year 2000, at which time the building had done a big, huge decline. It, it was, went in disarray, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was condemned, actually, by the city. Because really? It, we, Just like the Proctor's. Right. We were afraid it was going to fall down uh, on itself, but mostly important because the steeple was caving in on itself and leaning to the east. We were worried it was going to fall on the rectory for the church across the street. Wow. The building was condemned and the congregation was put out. And at that time, um, a couple of uh, men, uh, Tom Lewis and Jeff Pyle, uh, knew the historic importance of our building. It's a, it's a fa mm -hmm. fabulous building. Thank you, yeah. I mean, I was just like, my mouth dropped open when I was walking through it. Thank you, yeah. It's beautiful on the outside, too. Uh, we're also known as one of the finest ex examples of high Victorian Gothic architecture anywhere in the country. Really? Say that five times fast. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't think <laughs> but, I'll try it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, we uh, work with the Reverend in our congregation to partner with them. We built them a chapel within the building, and they allowed us uh, to do what we what we intended to do to realize the vision of. So you allow them to still building. come in, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, that and, was generous. Yeah. Yeah, and they're still with us. Yeah. We still have a few congregation members. Yeah, how right. sweet that yeah. is. But I well, I have to say, if you have not been to the Universal Preservation Hall, it's worth a visit. I mean, no matter what, go to one of their concerts, go to see the dinosaurs, whatever you do, go in there because it's an amazing, the stained glass windows and the the magnitude of the Great Hall is just, I mean, it's all, I was awestruck. I mean, I walked in and my mouth just dropped open. I even had to go up on all the levels to kind of get a <laughs> feel for that room. It was amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, we're really proud of the adaptability of the building. Uh, I mean, we can turn into anything basically. You had a big fashion show there we too. We have a wonderful fashion yeah. show there called Electric City Coach. Yeah, Day. that's with Aldrich. Uh, yeah, Corey Aldrich. Where is this stuff yeah. coming from? I don't know. <laughs> but that was, we had that for three years. It was actually really. Uh, uh, people loved it. We will bring um, a fashion show back. Just Good. not quite sure when. Yeah. Yet. Well, you know, everything's going to take a while to come back again. Right. But. Right. But, but you you have to come back again anyway and tell us more. But anyways, Teddy, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. You are a delightful guest Thank and you. so knowledgeable about something that you are so passionate about. Thank you so much. And it's so let's make here. sure those dinosaurs get a good look at, right? I hope so. <laughs> good, good. And I know you've changed your hours and they can go to their web, to the website to find out what those hours are. Don't make the trip unless you, you know, if you maybe you like to just walk around Saratoga or go to the Children's Museum. And here, right here, I've got Sarah Smith with me. Sarah, tell me about the Children's Museum and what you're doing. And I know you don't have any dinosaurs there, or maybe you do. Who knows? Well, actually, um, Teddy reached out to us um, before the dinosaurs came to town. So we um, searched through our collections, and we have a, um, a replica of okay. um, um, a fossilized Coelophysis. So that is a dinosaur that lived in New York State. Um, it's not a very big dinosaur. But we had like, dinosaurs in New York State. So, well, we must have. I, I mean, course. I don't know what I was thinking. Of, of course, but there aren't. There's not a huge fossilized um, record, and so we know that the sea lophysis did live um, in upstate New York. Um, there is a you know a couple of fossilized footprints. It's it's a dinosaur about the size of a dog. Um, well, maybe it was a baby dinosaur. I, listen, 
it, it's exciting, it's real. Um, and How do, cool is that? We do have a little bit of a connection. Um, we're all about connections in Saratoga, working together. Um, to I know you guys are all so great. You have Kate uh, Masterson over at the uh, Tracing Museum, and you have Corey. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Carly. Uh, Carly, yeah. Carly Connors Carly. over at the Auto Museum. <laughs> I did, That's amazing. You're I know really things well. are coming out of my brain that I'm, not, I'm really a little, well. getting a little scared, guys. I mean, you know, where is this stuff coming from? Uh, I have a Rolodex in there, and it just keeps spinning until it comes to the right thing. Um, but anyway, I know that you guys do work together, and you, you simply try to uh, encourage each other and compliment each other. Well, it's, I mean, that is one of the silver linings of the pandemic is that we've been able to work together. And so, you know, we've partnered with the Automobile Museum on a, a road rally for children. And so just getting kids You had a truck about, thing. You did a truck thing. But that wasn't day. the that wasn't the auto. But it So was. big truck day. Usually um, uh, we do get a, a vehicle from the Automobile Museum, but not this year. So that's where... Um, a lot of local companies sent giant vehicles um, over to Maple Lab Middle School in Saratoga. It's something that we have done for the past 15 years, um, and it just happened a few weeks ago. And so we were able to raise over $14,000 oh, for wonderful. the museum, which is an amazing, um, just just an amazing feat. I'm just so thankful to the community for helping us. It's been a bit of a rough year. Um, it has are, because you haven't been open. You haven't been getting a, those receipts coming through the front door. Sure, but it's also it was also super important. We had over two thousand people, and just to have the children outside safely, having fun. Um, one little boy told me that um, this was his second favorite day of the year, apart from Christmas. And I was like, Oh that my is goodness! We're here just to, that You joy. even beat out Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wow. So, so it's just it you know it's, it's things like that 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 make us realize you know how um, important how important you are the community and how important the community is to us. So happy to do that. We um, we are open. So we're we're happy to announce that that we're still open. Um, we are. But you're moving. What's going? How are you? Are you going to stay open and yeah. move and all that? How's that? So work? we are open till the end of December. We will open in our. We're open in our current location. So that has been our home for over twenty. And we have and we have pictures. Oh, I guess they got them up there right now. So what that's, are we? That's our at? new. Home. That's our new home. Um, so at the end of of the spring, so next um, 2020, in June of 2020, you're gonna come up and see. And we're gonna walk um, into that. We're that. gonna walk into the Lincoln Baths. The Lincoln Baths is- I remember the Lincoln Baths. I mean, I've never been there as a bath, but I remember <laughs> the Lincoln Baths driving by it. Right, so it's a beautiful building right next to the Dance Museum. It's right in Saratoga um, State Park. Beautiful front lawn. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it is gorgeous. So we're just so thrilled to move into that community of you know beautiful ecology um, and the, the like-minded people and the museums and then the performing arts. We're super excited. Um, but that building has, the back of the building where we'll be located has been unoccupied for at least 40 years. Is, so, are the baths still functioning? Um, there are, so that right now we will have to remove at least 12 baths. They're, oh. they're like where our offices are going to be and where the bathrooms okay, yeah, are. Yeah. So um, they're not functioning um, in that building. The, okay. the state does have other baths, um, the Gideon Putnam has yeah, 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 yeah. Roosevelt, but um, so it was functioned as a bathhouse. It's such a cool building because it hasn't been open to the public. And so um, the state has used it for other things. It houses other departments, um, but the opportunity to bring the general public into a state-owned building that is an amazing architectural Delight. It is. It's, it's a, a, when you drive by it, I remember as a little girl, I mean, we drive up Saratoga because there was no more Northway at the time. And we'd drive up right and we'd on. go right past it. And it was like, oh my gosh, you know, you know what is in it? There? I know, I it's, know. It's like a palace. So, you know, that is really befitting. The of Versailles. The, of the children <laughs> of, our, of the capital region, all 13 counties. And um, they're going to be welcome to this gorgeous marble building. Um, not marble on the inside, but you know, it's a really, it's a beautiful building. It is. It's a so magnificent so, building. So, so architecturally, windows, yeah. Um, so much light. So we're super excited to be able to restore that and preserve it um, and bring it back to life and, and welcome, welcome our people into that building in 2022 in June. Until then, we're... So, oh, so it's going to take you six months from December to June to get this all 
put together and get your new. And you've got some interesting things that, from what I saw from your plans, like you've got a little do, or a veterinary's office or a doctor's office. Or tell, so, tell us a little sure. bit about so, because the, did you have them in the old one? So some of the so the the most important exhibitions at our current location were. Like I said, we've been for 20 years. Um, the museum is 32 years old. Um, okay. So we've moved a little bit around Saratoga, but we've been there for 20 years. And so we've had a doctor's office, um, a pet vet. We've had um, a grocery store. Um, those sort of iconic exhibitions along with a fire station, super important to our general public. Um, those, those exhibitions will be brought over to the new place, um, but it's going to take us a while. So it takes six months for us um, to well, first get, you get the baths out. I mean, those aren't going to be easy to we lift start, out. <laughs> we start construction in September, but just to get the entire facility ready and ready for the exhibitions will take a little bit of time. And then the exhibitions themselves um, need to be refurbished. And um, This must be exciting for you to, to know that maybe you're taking some things out of collections and being able to use them now. Well, it's just so exciting that, you know, we... You know, we're, we're taking um, what we have always had and loved, but we're making them universally acceptable. And so, university accessibility. So, not just um, physical limitations, the barriers will be removed so you don't have to climb stairs to drive the fire truck. Um, it's all on one level. So if you're in a oh, wheelchair, so you're actually doing handicap accessibility. Handicap accessibility, but it's I now think it's called universal design. So it's made for um, any sort of um, mental limitations or physical limitations. Those well, and you're also removed. looking at autism, where the noise 100%. is. Yeah. So we we um, we will have a room in the library that is a quiet space that has special lighting, soft services. Um, sort of a, a sensory rich environment to sort of decompress. So it's it's important for us to have those resources because we want everyone to feel welcome and this is their museum. Um, and so that's, you know, we've taken what we have learned in the past 30 years and just, we're just bringing it to a new level. Well, and I know that theaters sometimes are doing that, having even like movie theaters and, and also uh, live theater are having special performances for uh, people who have uh, aut people, because they're adults too, that have autism and have the sensory issues. Well, the, the great thing is that even um, neurotypical people uh, can benefit from some of these. Um, There's so many things. terms, I may not just, even be using the right one. No, no, it's, I, I mean, I think it's just, uh, you know, sometimes it's too loud, uh, big truck day, we have a quiet hour. Those are really loud trucks. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's beeping their horns and the lights are flashing. It's a lot. So, you know, we always try to make sure we're accommodating. And if, you know, you don't like loud noises, you're welcome at a certain time. Yeah. And if you come to our museum and you want it a little quieter, we have headphones that you can wear. We have oh, okay. So you've got, you've, fit, you've, you've really been accommodating. I, we have I, a long history of being accommodating to, yes, all are welcome. I, well, I will say this about the large trucks because I brought my great grandson up to Saratoga to uh, you know breakfast at the track where you know you bring the kid you know you, you bring your little snacks with you and the kids can see the horses. He's four years old, but what fascinated him were the trucks that came that sprayed the water down and then <laughs> had the the rakes that came through. Right. Those were really so. The big trucks do fascinate kids, don't they? I think. The I mean, he was like, "Oh, oh." They and understand he's... anything that they can see that they can is hands on that they can understand. Like, oh, this is for the horses, so that it makes sense to them. Yeah, if they yeah. can see it. Um, if they can experience those real things, that's great. Yeah. Um, and if you can't go to the track, maybe you can come visit the museum because we're going to have a, a barn. You're going to um, have a barn. Yes. I mean, the horses are not going to be real. but um, Oh, they aren't real horses. You okay. can learn about the, the yeah. horsemanship and the husbandry of taking care well, of animals. Well, because that's what Saratoga is. I mean, not not it's not all horses, but let's face it. It's it's part of August anyway. Well, it's it's also, you know, hearkening back to the roots of Saratoga County was a pretty rural agrarian society. Yes, it was. You know, built on that farming economy. So it's super important. It's also important for kids regardless of where they live, to know where the food is from. Well, you know, that's that's really important because, you know, uh, you know, cows make milk, you know, but they think it comes in a box, and that's how it comes, you know. Where do eggs come from? Oh, yeah, I guess they come, whoa, is that really how they come? <laughs> right, if, if they can come, if they can learn a little bit about, um, you know, about animals and a little bit about vegetables, that's great, um, and how to take care of them and how to make some healthy choices how to get outside into nature, really encouraging kids to 
um, step away from some technology. Now we don't eschew all technology. We do have some technology in the new museum, but we're really, um, we're, we're pretty basic in terms of very hands-on, really robust things kids, that kids are, can They're so manipulate. stimulated. They're so stimulated with uh, IT. I mean, it's like they've got maybe a, a phone. I mean, I don't know. They all do. But anyway, it seems like small kids are even getting phones, you know, stop, really, or Which, iPads and stuff. We need to step away from that and actually get, like, what you're doing is hands-on. Well, it's, it's something we've always done. And so, the, you know, the parents 30 years ago made that choice. When yeah, they, because we didn't even have the IT then. Or well, the, they you had, know. like, POM. <laughs> they had oh, yeah, art. right, yeah. You know, there were, there were video options, and they, they just made the choice to make it more hands-on. Um, you know, there's different modalities, different ways that kids learn. If they learn better through technology, then great. We will have we some can, you, I mean, you can adapt um, things so that it does work, but you can't really just throw just one thing because they live in an environment where they're breathing air and they're seeing birds fly and they're seeing trucks go by. And so there's a lot of stimulation that is a learning experience. It, it is, so everyday life, and that's, so half of our exhibition is, or our new um, exhibition space is dedicated to the doctor and the grocery store um, and the theater and the library. These are all parts of your normal life. There's an ice cream parlor these are, oh, this is okay. your everyday oh. life. And then the other part is, you know, a bus and um, a park where you can play and a boat and a lake. I know, can't so imagine what this is going to be like. When you're not going to have to imagine because you're going to come and play. But, um, you know, I think that it's... Do they have an adult's day? <laughs> Come on. Might have adults I want adults and... day. I want to play. I don't want my kids to see me doing this. No, but that's the great thing is that, yeah. um, you know, this, this new space will allow us to have older children as well. Um, and I think that, you know, an 11 year old doesn't like to be seen playing at a children's museum, but an 11 year old is still a child and still enjoys putting on the fireman's hat. I mean, honestly, wouldn't you like to put on a fireman's hat? Absolutely. And, put out a fire? yeah. and I want somebody to take a picture of it too. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so these are, you know, we all have that innate desire to sort of play. And, and if we can help kids learn through play, great. If we can help adults learn to play, that's awesome. We've, we've gotten a little bit of, uh, of far from that because it's, it's what I'm seeing a lot of. And, and this is my, I shouldn't be griping, but it's like the cell phone. Is the cell phone God in now? I mean, is that part of a new religious experience? I mean, that you've got to be connected all the time? Well, I, I, we... We understand that at some point you're going to want to have, so in this great, this building is perfect for this. So we do have a courtyard, 4,000 square feet, surrounded by our building, very safe. So the parent can sit on a bench, they can have their cup of coffee, they can check their email, the child can play outside. Oh, okay. And then so they... they can put away their phone and go and play with the child inside. Good, okay. You can have both experiences. There's no judgment. There's, it's a judgment-free zone. <laughs> Happy to, 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 to provide do. you well, you get Sometimes you do have to check your email and find you, out what's you going on. Yeah. Because everyone's working from home or remotely yeah. or however, yeah. or, you know, everyone has a complex life. We want to be accommodating to everyone, but also, you know, encouraging you to just go outside and experience And play nature. with your kids. Yeah. Just play. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. So you've got, you're going to be, so we can look for 2022 for this opening. 2022. Yes, and and I, I guess we didn't discuss it. Is there a charge to go to the museum? There is. Currently, our charge is ten dollars per person. Okay. Um, children, infants are free. Okay. But if if people have a limited income, we do have um, we have museums for all. It's something we participate in. Um, and so, if you have an electric benefits card, meaning like a SNAP card or a WIC card, then each person in your party is one dollar. Oh, okay. And that well, is something that the museum raises money for and, and covers the cost for people to make sure that there is no barrier. Yeah, because that's the one thing is it's a barrier. If, if, you can, if you've got four kids, you know, and, you know, you, it's like, well, wait a minute. You know, we, how, we, want every, we want everyone to come. And I can't, I'm going to be there. That. I'm going to be in there. I'm going to be in there when you open up. Because you I, have to bring a child with you. But if we did have a special oh, day I have to bring for a kid. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can find event. a kid. I can find a kid, yeah. <laughs> This, this doesn't mean like goats or anything. It's got to be a real It kid. has to be an actual human <laughs> child. But I like the idea of goats. <laughs> well, you got that barn. <laughs> Well-behaved goats, yes. Therapy goats. Therapy goats. Now, there's a concept. 
<laughs> Sarah, it's such a pleasure to have you on and to talk about what you're doing up in Saratoga and how you're reinventing the Lincoln Baths. Um, well, will you be taking over the entire place or just that portion? Oh my goodness, thank you for asking that question. Um, it is 80,000 square feet. So You're not are, taking it. <laughs> we are not, we are not. We are taking over um, 12,000 and that includes the 4,000 um, square foot outside space and 8,000 square feet inside the building. Um, and how is the entrance? Well, how will they find you? So we will have lots of signs. We do have um, a large ramp at the back of the building, um, very visible. Um, and eventually the state has plans for, you know, redoing some of the signage and parking um, to make it more accessible. Okay, good. So we're going to see you then in uh, June and maybe uh, you'll be on the show again to talk a little Wonderful. bit. Of, yeah, or maybe Thank we can so even much. come up there and do some filming. That Who would knows? be great. Yeah, Sarah, thanks so much for being here. It's always a pleasure to meet you again. We, we met before and uh, for you to explain to our viewers uh, what you're doing up in Saratoga. Thank Keep you. up the good work and for kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. We're going to be talking about, and I think uh, you, she actually mentioned that she does something with theater. I should have explored that more, but hey, Joe. Hi there, how are you? You're here from the Schenectady Civic Players. Yeah. You've been around with them a long time, but... Oh my God, I think uh, a long time, 50 Yeah, we were not going to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, it's been a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but you've got a really interesting event coming up, and I know you've done this in the past. <clears throat> yes, we did. And it's... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. It's one that benefits the community as well as the, uh, as the Civic well, Players. Well, it benefits the theater, and it also benefits people who... Um, <clears throat> we call it, you call it like treasures in your attic. Okay. Last time we did this, uh, um, someone came in with a, an original Audubon portfolio and didn't know, have any idea that it was worth, you know, close to $100,000. <gasps> yeah, so you never know what you've got. Let's put it that way. Oh, my goodness. You know, but I, but, but you, it's not worth it unless you can sell it. Well, that's part of the, that's part of the process okay. here. Um, you know, I've been doing the antique business for 60 I years. I know you have. You, you have a place up in Boston Spa? Is uh, it? Stone Soup Antiques. Yeah. It's between Saratoga and Boston Spa, okay. actually, yeah. But anyway, the Playhouse is doing this on September 18th and 19th. Two days. Uh, two days, 9.30 to 4. Uh, you can bring your items down. Uh, there is a charge per item. It's $5 an item. But if they bring a multiple, then I think it, the charge well, goes down or something? It's, it depends on how it what they what they okay. actually have okay. yeah like it's if it's a box of silver obviously yeah would, they're not going to charge for each, each piece, piece of, of silver, silver yeah no, we would charge we were not going to do that it's to benefit the theater obviously we do it as a fundraiser um <coughs> as you know we've all been in trouble for the last year not i only i swear practice. we've we've tried to survive in everybody yeah. in the world has been trying to survive yeah and um if obviously a fundraiser as i said for the theater but it's really a great benefit for the community in a sense that if people have to have things and they're not sure of the value of the item, we have, we have the appraisers that come in to do this. Or they don't call it the antique roadshow. They can't that's do that. That's a different that thing. That's a because different thing. Because that's a... a, a that is a, a you know, a, a, that name is, uh, is owned it, by Yeah, it's, it's trademark. These are the same people. It's, it's called the New York Appraisers Roadshow. Okay. And the fellas and gals that do this are from South Bees and, and uh, Park Brene. Southern Bees, yeah. Southern Bees yeah. and, and Park Brene. They're people that are very highly, highly qualified to look at items. And, and make an assessment, work. yeah. And also they can tell you uh, where you might sell it. Um, oh, that's helpful. Yeah, it, it's very helpful because if you've got an item that, um, you know, you, obviously, unless you're in the business like I am, you don't know where to sell the item. I mean, the item really isn't worth anything until you find somebody that wants it. Yeah, you can say it. this is worth, you know, three hundred thousand dollars, and nobody whatever, wants it. Nobody wants it, right? It's it's a, you just you just don't know, you know. That's the thing. And right now, the market is very hot for watches. If you've got unusual watches or uh, paintings, uh, jewelry is very popular right now. Uh, Chinese and uh, uh, Asian art is very hot on the market. Again. Oh, really? Okay. Anything you want to bring down from uh, China or Japan. Um, rugs, obviously small rugs are very hot right now. So it's, it's, really, um, it's really interesting because, uh, you know, the appraiser will, uh, can, can look at a family item, actually. You might have something that's been in the family for years. And you're wondering, passed down, passed down, passed down. And, and finally, it's sort of like, 
oh, that belonged to grandma. Right. But you'd forget that there was, there may have not been, maybe right. it was a handcrafted item by right. a famous person that was given to her as and a even, wedding gift. And even myself, I look at stuff every single day. And I, I never, you know, there's certain things that I'm not sure. Like last time I had a, a, a an agent's uh, card that had the, the hundred famous actors on it. And all the Booth brothers were on it. Oh my which goodness. Which meant it was pre-Lincoln assassination. And I was wondering what it was worth and I brought it in. And I, I actually had a stained glass window that had Franklin Roosevelt on it, which I had never seen before. I couldn't figure out what that was worth. And then, you know, so so even myself who looks at stuff. Wow. And, and you know, you think, you, I've been in this business and looking at things for 60 years, and you think you know everything, and you really don't, because something comes in that's brand new in your mind you've never seen before, and every day you see something different. And also, the other thing I'd like to say is, it doesn't necessarily have to be old to be valuable. It could be a Barbie doll from the, yeah. That's right. It in could, the original box. They're, they're worth quite a bit of money, so yeah, certain yeah. Barbie dolls. And what would happen to those Cabbage Patch dolls? Oh, I think they they bit the dust. They, they bit the farm. Remember, remember those? Yeah. Remember the Cabbage yeah. Patch dolls yeah. that everybody wanted that yeah. one year and you yeah. went to... To, to, uh, I never did, but everybody No, did. well, I had girls. Yeah. And, oh, okay. and you know, and they wanted, and you had to go to Amsterdam to get them or find right. them or you found out somebody had them and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's like I said, it, like you said, the Barbie doll. Certain Barbie dolls are worth money. Other ones are not. Are, is Ken worth anything? No, I'm well, kidding. Depends, <laughs> no, no, it depends on which one yeah. it is. Yeah. It really depends on, you just, you just don't know. I, I, I'll give you an example of something that I didn't know. I, I bought a, um. A, a, a program that said it said it, the front of the program said 1902 John Philip Sousa's band uh, Rome New York Rome okay. Rome New York yeah. and it was a two page fold out program and I paid six dollars for it and I said to myself well you know somebody a collector would want this maybe for 15 bucks or so I'll make a few bucks I put it on eBay and it went to the John Philip Sousa Museum in Missouri, and it sold for close to a thousand dollars. Now I had no no idea, no idea that that program. What a nice return on your money for six dollars. So you just don't know. I mean, that doesn't happen every day, but that kind of thing does happen, and you might just have that one item that that could be worth a lot of money or could be worth something, and you, you'd like to know. Particularly well, family treasures. Yeah, and I find that sometimes looking, this is an odd thing, but sometimes you find you got these old books and you and there's somebody must have used something for a bookmark. Right. And that turns out to be a program that they got. So, you know, always be careful about what yeah. you're looking at. Yeah, it's it's very interesting business, the antique business. I do a lot of uh, stuff with paper, political documents and uh Theatrical material, obviously. Theatrical yeah, because material. of the theater. Yeah. I'm very involved uh, in the theater. Yeah. So when, uh, so getting back to the yeah. appraisers road show, you can bring in anything. Suppose I had this clock here, and I go, I wonder if that's worth anything. You can bring in any item. Five bucks, I'll find out whether it's worth worth anything or not. Right. Now I've watched the the antique road show on uh, PBS, which I find fascinating. Right. I think. At least I think it's the one on PBS. I don't know if there's more yeah, than one. Yeah. No, it's, but but I watch it, and they'll give you a value. They think that the person comes in, oh, I, I got this. My mother got this as a wedding gift, and it came from, and it turns out, well, that's they don't make that anymore. And it's going to work by the same an, way. It's going to work the same and way. And they say it's worth like $30,000. They'll, they'll give you a value of, of, of a range. They'll say, let's say something is worth between of five hundred and a thousand dollars just as a throw out figure and they'll also show you what it is actually selling for oh, okay. they have computers oh so in other words they could say well this item is is worth x amount of dollars and it's sold but for it, but it actually sold for down here so it may be worth more than it's selling for right now or it, it might be just the opposite or it might be just the opposite so so they'll say to you this is let's say it's worth between uh Fifty and a hundred dollars, and they'll say, "Well, we would be, we'll buy it from you for say seventy-five dollars." They'll give you a range, and then they'll offer a price. Oh, you mean they will even buy they, it they if they think it's worth? They can if they if they're interested in it. If they're interested, and they think they can make more on it. Well, obviously, obviously they're, yeah. they're, they're in business to make a to make yeah, a price. Yeah, obviously, is. but they're going to give you a fair value because they're going to be in today's world. 
it's it's very easy to f to find out what something is worth because of the oh internet. yeah the because internet of, yeah because of the internet. In, when I first started in this business, it was a, it was just simply trust. You had to trust that I was telling you the truth. You know, and in fact, I was in real estate for forty years, and in the beginning of when I first started in real estate. You had to trust me that I was telling you what your house, what your house is worth. Is worth yeah. There was no way you could find out. Well, now, now you can compare the go to Zillow and, and you find out what the, every neighborhood. Right. You can yeah. Find out anything you want. So there, it's very upfront. And very. Uh, it's a very interesting business. I was at an auction uh, uh, on Saturday. It was all Asian and antiques, and and now they they bid online. I mean, the the man who owned. Uh, what is it? Alibaba was bidding. bidding. Oh, oh, that's in, in, can, uh, in, in China. Yeah, he bought stuff out of this auction in Albany that I was at. I didn't know that until today. Somebody, the man who ran the auction told yeah. me. He's one of the appraisers. He said, would you believe it? The man who owned Alibaba was buying online. And so we're bidding against someone who we could obviously get the item. But, you know, but so it, it, the point I'm making is that the Internet has made things very accessible and it, it, it actually brings a sense of, 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 to be honest, honesty into the business, too. Yeah, it does. Because, because people, are, are, people are very leery sometimes of, you know, when you say to them, well, this is worth X amount of dollars. But now you can prove it's worth X amount of dollars. Because you can find out where... Yeah, when I'm well, in the store up, at, up, in Zerto, up in Boston Spa, people bring things in all the time. And I say, well, let me look it up. Let me show you. Yeah, so this it's is, not like it's off the top of my yeah, head. I think that's worth you know, such and a And 90% of the time I can say to them, well, it's worth $50, and I can turn the computer, blah, 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 and show them right there, and they can look at it, that what it's that it's over $50, yeah, yeah. or 75 or whatever. Or I'll say to them, it's worth 100 but I can't pay any more than $50. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's all Because you have to turn it around anyway, because, got, yeah. You've got to show them what it's worth. Yeah, yeah because you yeah. Got, Trust is very important. Honesty is very important in our business. Yeah, because there's going to be it's like any business. Yeah, because otherwise, you won't get the referrals you get. I mean, yeah. I go to houses all the time, looking at stuff and appraising things for people. Are books valuable? Depends on the book. It really depends on the book. It depends on what what it is. Um, uh, uh, in the, in the, sometimes age doesn't always predict. We're not something. talking first editions. We're you just know, talking. Yeah. First editions are can be worth quite yeah. a bit of money, and certain books are worth. Uh, well, it depends on the book, and the, the you know I I do a lot with books on the internet, and uh, uh, it's it books are tough because you know obviously there's so many they print so many of the book, and uh, it just depends on who's looking for it. And, and well, you know, you bring up a good point that if I'm looking for a specific book because somebody in my family wrote it or something, right. you know, it's going to be valuable to me and may not be valuable to anybody right, else. Right, right, right. That's an so, interesting and that, that's yeah. that, I mean, so it all depends what right. you're, and, and I'll tell you a funny story is that at one time, um, my husband was working on these glass slides. Maybe you remember, you no, know, with, remember with the, yeah, with the, yeah. the, the the viewers yeah. and everything. So he was looking for glass slides because he was going to bring them uh, to an exhibition for exhibition. And he started buying a few on eBay. And the price was, yeah, I don't know, say $5, I don't know, $10. I, give me a number, anyway, $10. Well, by the time he started buying them, the price went up to over $100. Yeah. And he quit buying. Because what happened is they saw that there was a buyer out there and pretty soon the prices started going up. And other people were started buying them, so the prices went up. Yeah. Let me also so, mention So that, that could happen, you know, know and it could be in your favor. Well, that, true, that's absolutely if true. You're Let yourself. me also mention that this, the theater is going to open September 10th and 12th okay. with the guys. That's the show. We're bringing in a group, an outside group, to do that. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Okay. And then also after that in November, we're doing a show called Ran This Random World. That was the one they were going to do. Well, these are all shows we were. Yeah, I mean, doing. You're, yeah, yeah. And in January, we're doing a play called Mar Marjorie Prime. What's that about? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> For, it's, it says, in the age of artificial intelligence, an 85 year old Marjorie, a jumble I'm, I'm of desperate, usually, fading memories. Actually, I do know what's written. Yeah, there, but I don't I, know I'm it. reading this. I really don't know the show. I don't either. I and hadn't then, heard of uh, it. On, uh, in March, we're doing a play called The Cake. I, that's going to be a good one. That's an interesting show. Yeah. And then in May, Murder on the Orient. Well, Express. who doesn't know Agatha Christie? Right, who doesn't like a no low Agatha Yeah, Christie. yeah, yeah. So the theater, hopefully, 
if things work out in the world and in the century and in our country. And our well, state. you know, and I got, <laughs> we'll I got, I got an email. Uh, I, I sent out um, free events, you know, my on my I right. do that. And I had entered your the one your stage reading, which is a free event, but you make right. a donation. Okay, Lady of the Camellias. So the person emailed me and says, "Oh, I love flowers." And I says, <laughs> "I said I, I'm not sure that's about flowers. I think it has to do with actresses and playing Camel. <laughs> is that yeah, right? Is it? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so I wasn't far off base. And also, yeah, did I interrupt you? Well, now that I remember, we will be doing the dinner theater. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, we're going to start. I loved that. Yeah. You know, I loved doing it, right? When yeah. I was doing <laughs> I had so much fun. Yeah, we're going yeah. to gonna do the dinner theater. I'm not sure of the date of that, but yeah. we'll be back to talk to you about that. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, it's it, would that That's um, a wedding to it'll, die for? Yeah, the wedding you die for, it'll probably be in April. So okay, I have April 8th here. You'd have April. Got well, the I, I'm just reading what you sent me. Oh, I direct it. I'm directing it, but I don't know when it is. You don't know when it is. Well, be sure to be there. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. sure. There, it yeah. says April 8th, 2022. Oh, there you at go. At 6 p.m., directed by Joe Fava. There you go. That's you. That's me. And then I you're doing that. Opera Saratoga as well, and then additional stage right. readings. I have, love this this flyer and here. And we're going to have more uh, specials, too, I think, with fundraisers and sure. stuff. Sure. Fun things for the theater. Now, one other thing uh, before we go. Uh, can anyone rent the place? Because that's another yeah, thing, a way of, of getting a little income. We do. We do allow rentals in, uh, you know, depending upon what it is and how when they need it. If it doesn't affect If it doesn't, if you don't have to dismantle schedule, your stage or anything. The place is empty during the day, so if it's a meeting somebody wants to hold, they could just call um, uh, the yeah. theater. And, okay. And they'll get a call back because uh, the place is available, and you know the... We have an elevator now, which... You have that fabulous which, elevator. Know, we can get to the second floor, so I we know. don't have to worry about handicap accessibility. And, and the or, interior was designed so beautifully. You. If you're a new thank addition, you. I just love the chandelier that. that's up there. I mean, it's just, I love I it. I did that, all that. I know you did. I, did. I know you, you did. I'm, I'm very just, proud of yeah. all And that. the windows. Oh, you I'm did such a good job. I'm the light. I, I actually made that light. Did you really? Yeah, I, I admire it well, every time I'm there. I made it. I had somebody bend the steel the way I wanted it so that it would okay. hang properly. Yeah, I'm very, very proud of all I know. of that. Yeah. I know. I'm and amazed. I, it's, and you know, it's for the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. The whole place is built around. What, we're not going to live forever? No, come on, we're Joe. we're not going to live forever. And it's for the next group yeah. of people to come in and have fun. Yeah. Because I had fun and I want somebody else to have fun. Exactly. Let's just keep, let's keep theater. You know? Well, and theater to me is just so, we're never going to get rid of live theater. Ever, ever, yeah. ever. I don't care whether we have television or whatever, well, movies. We'll, always, be we'll always have live theater. And and that's, the, the, the fact is when you're in that environment, you are like, you're there. And well, you know, the other thing, I don't know if people realize, but the history of the Civic Players we are one of the five oldest continue operating theaters in the, the United States. The other one is States. in Philadelphia, I think, or They're something. They're around the country, yeah. yeah, but we are one of the oldest ones. And and the other thing is radio drama started here. I know in, it did. People don't know that in Schenectady. It was With the first, WGY. It was and, the first, yeah. and there was a lot of the actors came from the Civic Play yeah, Playhouse yeah. to be on radio on the radio. And the guy who ran the, the radio station said, the play can't be any longer than 45 minutes because the American attention span is no more longer than 45 minutes. Is that right? And from that, they, they did a show in Oklahoma or something, finally in New York, but New Schenectady was where it started. Radio drama and then television drama actually started. I know it did. People don't realize that. Alexanderson, Alexander. Alexanderson, Ale is it? It's got, yeah, it's got an, uh, there's Lived another the, syllable in there. Lived up with the G plot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't forget the road show. No, the road September, show. We want to talk September about the 18th, New York appraisers. 18th, 19th, 9.30 to 4. Bring your items down. Polish up those items and bring them in, unless it's bring a book. Bring silver, <laughs> you can bring silver, you can bring sterling, you can bring jewelry. They'll be, they, they have a, a, a about 13 appraisers. Oh, wow. They're, they're available too. There'll probably be about six or seven, maybe eight, ten there, but then they have the other ones because of the, they can call and email and they send pictures back and forth. And to, uh, it's a great to event. It's a great event. Yeah, it's, grab, it's, grab it's your stuff and, and make sure that you are. Uh, thank you for letting us come on here. Of course. You know, I, I love you guys, it. you know. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much, Joe. And I thank will you. tell you who's coming on next week because we've got a great lineup. 
We have the Kids Art Festival coming up. Can you believe the Kids Art Festival is gonna be in September this year, September 25th. And Glenville Oktoberfest is coming up. Good things are happening here. We have the Pine Bush Preserve and we're gonna be talking about their museum and what's going on there. We have the Rotary Golf Tournament coming up and believe it or not, Schenectady Civic Players are coming on again. Oh, that's yeah. probably for the guys. Christine Lafredo and oh, Sarah. Oh, the president. Yeah, 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 they're gonna come on, so. Good. Yeah, we're going to be as stuff. much as we can squeeze in here. We're going to be, you back. know, it, you know, it. thank you for watching uh, Capital Region today. I'm Ann Pearl, your host. I'm always pleased to be here and to share uh, these wonderful guests with you and hope that you'll take advantage of some of these events coming up. And if not, and if you have an event you want to talk about, give me a call. I'll be glad to talk to you. I'm Ann Pearl.